Dr. Pagradis, welcome to Atlanta. Very nice to be with you, Phil. What an interesting time for you to be here on Europe Day with a financial crisis in Europe and a financial crisis in the United States. Do you think these crises are going to bring us closer together or are they going to strain our relationship? No, I think it's uh, clear that our relationship is evolving very uh, positively. We have a lot of uh, uh, positive uh, points on our very important agenda and the crisis is just one uh, among those. And in fact, even the crisis clearly will bring us closer together. You are originally from Greece. Yes. And you're very much involved with the European Union. Is uh, Europe going to stay behind Greece during this crisis? Well, I think that it's not even a question. Uh, it's quite clear. It was clear to all of us uh, before last weekend uh, that uh, sol solidarity is the, uh, really the basis on which the whole EU is built. And it was clear to all of us, knowing the EU, uh, that uh, solidarity was there for Greece. I think now it's uh, obvious to the whole world. The EU took uh, extraordinary measures uh, reacting to the crisis, uh, supporting Greece, uh, creating a mechanism of solidarity as you know, of more than 500 billion uh, euros, uh, I think there is no question anymore that the solidarity is uh, here and is strong as ever. From the layman's perspective, as we look across the Atlantic, there seems to be so much confusion. Confusion about how the U.S. financial crisis grew into this tremendous bubble that eventually burst, and then from the United States, confusion about how the European crisis evolved. We remember the criteria that were set at Maastricht as to admission to the Eurozone. What's happened to those um, criteria and what's their future? Yeah, Phil, uh, it might look like a confusion. In fact, what is happening is simple. A, uh, what happened uh, at the beginning of the uh, banking crisis that uh, turned into a financial crisis, then an economic crisis, starting in the United States a couple of years ago, is simply that uh, public authorities were not able to uh, have a, a, a monitoring, a supervision of what the markets were doing to the necessary extent as to prevent it. So uh, things went a little bit out of hand, uh, risks were accumulated in an unsustainable way and uh, we started and the, started, uh, and the crisis started that became from banking a financial crisis, an economic crisis and then a, a, in fact a global crisis of the kind. Uh, what we are seeing in, uh, in Europe uh, and the answer to your question is that we do have uh, of course a, a, a monitoring, a supervising system to, uh, which was supposed to uh, make sure that this crisis do not happen. And you can argue that this system failed. These criteria are uh, there and they were not able to prevent the crisis. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, you don't have a crisis if you don't uh, lose somehow uh, the monitoring ability of the elements that uh, take us to the crisis. And that's what happened in Europe. We have a system, the criteria is there, uh, that served Europe very well for several years, under the, the circumstances, the last couple of years, these mechanisms proved that they were not sufficient. And the answer, of course, is to make them stronger. And that's what is happening. So that's why I say basically what is happening is, is uh, relatively simple. There were criteria, there were rules, there were mechanisms, uh, which were supposed to make us able to avoid crises of the kind, uh, that uh, proved to be not sufficient. And what we are seeing is Europe reacting, putting in place the uh, necessary uh, mechanisms to address the short-term crisis, but also to make us able to, uh, to respect these criteria that remain uh, absolutely pertinent and valid for, uh, for the longer term. There's a general agreement that um, no country should leave the Eurozone once it's admitted. So with that understanding, how do you enforce the regulations? What penalty is there for not meeting the criteria? Uh, I don't think the issue is a question of penalty, although we are talking about that. 
Uh, we knew from the beginning of the creation of the uh, common currency, the euro, that uh, we needed to uh, be successful in respecting two basic conditions. As I said, it's simple. Two basic conditions. One, fiscal sustainability. Every sovereign country, because our member states uh, remain sovereign countries, of course, they are members of the EU, but they are sovereign countries. Every sovereign member of the EU needs to uh, have a fiscal responsibility, exercise fiscal responsibility, and maintain fiscal sustainability. That's one condition. And the other uh, condition is what we call convergence, which is in fact convergence of the competitiveness of the economy. Uh, you uh, realize that if you are in a monetary uh, union, you cannot have one state whose uh, overall competitiveness is improving and the, and the other uh, who is completely, continuously losing competitiveness. So we need to have a convergence of competitiveness. It does not mean that the Greeks have to become overnight, uh, or the Greek economy has to become overnight as efficient uh, and as competitive as the German economy, to take the two extremes. But it means that Greece has to be in a path of increased competitiveness that makes the whole system sustainable. Yeah? Yeah. That's the aim. That's what we, uh, we knew uh, was the challenge from the beginning. And that's what the whole system that we are setting up now is aiming to achieve. It's not, I repeat, it's not something new. It's not something that we have discovered with the crisis. We knew it from the beginning of the euro. We have the mechanisms to try to achieve that. Mm. The mechanism did not prove uh, sufficient because of the extent of the economic crisis that nobody has really, uh, was really able to anticipate. Mm. Uh, and now the whole aim of the new measures, it's exactly that, is to make us able to uh, reach these two conditions that are the basis of the sustainability of the, common, uh, of the common currency. And in addition to that, we have this mechanism that now makes able the EU to deal with extraordinary crises as the one that uh, Greece is going through now.